again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy Hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network, it's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common, probably never a true word was spoken. Other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar, today we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Fred Street, which is a couple of blocks down from Napoleon Avenue, heading toward Jefferson. There are no roadworks here. You can park anywhere you want. It's a fabulous bar. Yeah, they have food that's half price and drinks that are half price for three hours every day, handily from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And if you take a look around, Asher can move the camera around the whole bar. You'll see there's not a solitary person in here, <laughs> not one because it's the middle of summer. Well, it's not even the middle of summer, it's the beginning of summer, except those of us sitting around here about to entertain you and ourselves for the next 60 minutes on Happy Hour. And I'm joined by a very eclectic bunch of people today. The fabulous John Lisi is back from John Lisi and Delta Funk, who's making his... Hey, 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 hey. What a parent. Right. Back on the show. Third, fourth? Third, yeah. Third time. Holy back. shit, how you like that? We're looking forward to hearing from you. But how have you been? You have your beautiful Dobro in your hand. Yeah, I've been great, play. man. Doing great. You look good. Thanks. You right look back y- at you. younger than ever. Hey, man, I keep getting younger as I drink what, more. What's the <laughs> secret is alcohol. And then yeah. to my right is John Abear. Have I pronounced that correctly? Yes, you did, sir. It's John. Yes. I thought so. Abear, I know, because it's spelled the Cajun way. Are you Cajun, actually? Yes. Uh, my dad was uh, David Abear from Homa. And, like, my grandfather got kicked out of elementary school because he refused to speak English. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. What did he, what was he speaking? He only spoke Cajun uh, French? Yeah, only spoke Cajun French. I took four semesters of French at LSU so I could speak it to my grandfather, and he turned around and looked at my dad and goes, is that what you send him to that fancy college school for, to speak that <laughs> fancy French? He was a tough old ba- guy, you know? I loved what, him, but he was a tough old bastard. What did he do? Was he a shrimper or something? He was. He was actually a riverboat pilot and a shrimper and all that. Wow, he's the real thing. Oh, yeah. He was almost like a, a, a stereotype. Pretty is, much. Is your family tied into Bobby Aber's family? We used to joke that that was a cousin, and then my grandfather met his dad, and we are first cousins. No shit. Yeah, so we are oh, related really cousin Bobby. Good question, John. <laughs> Bobby Aber, the Cajun Cannon, is your first cousin. <laughs> He's his dad already, and my grandfather are first cousins. So. Really? Yeah. Can, do you have his phone number on you? <laughs> no, I don't. Because he's probably on WWL right now. We could call him. Yeah, yeah let's call him. Yeah. yeah. Right. Let's, let's, let's bitch about Saints draft picks. <laughs> yeah, let's but do that. But if you, if you call him and say, I got an A-bear here, he might be like, no fucking way. <laughs> All right, okay. Do you ever hang out with him? <laughs> no. I've met him once, but I didn't get into all that. You're not invited to the <laughs> family crawfish boil. And where believe does he even live? In believe Midler, it or not, now, A Bear is considered the most prominent Cajun name in South Louisiana. Is that right? Yeah, where behind Gidry, ahead of Gidry, and ahead of Gidry and Robichaux and Thibodeau, and I'm actually related to some Robichaux and Thibodeaux through marriage. Right. Bergeron's got to met- be up there. Who? Bergeron's got to be Bergeron? up there, too. That's got to be right. up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you heard my jersey. I said burger on first. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, no, I, I no, had to fix myself. Yeah, really, yeah. that's bad. <laughs> Are you married to anybody, John? No, I'm not. And yet you're the king of love. Yeah, right. trying to be. Yeah. You see his T-shirt? Mm, Have you seen Idy? Come on, this is this is Idy Kansas who's here Hi. as well. Hi, Idy. And Idy is spelled A-I-D-I. Uh, yes. Now, is that your real name? It is. It is. And what about Kansas? That is also That's my your ring very kicks ass. I know. Oh, thanks. Wow. I know. So you've never actually been Miss Kansas? No. You're only no, Mrs. No. Kansas? I am Mrs. Kansas, yes. And where does Mr. Kansas come from? Is he from here? He's from New Orleans. Mm-hmm. That's such an unusual name. It is. It is. Uh, it's got Russian roots, and I think they uh, abbreviated it or chopped it off when they came to Ellis Island. It was originally Kansas Shinsky or something? Probably, yeah. yeah you yeah. don't know what it was, though, for real? I mean, I've ha- I've been in the conversation. I've walked around. I've heard them, you know, talk about the the last name. But and you didn't I don't pay any re- attention. Well, no. And now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> that is pretty bad. How long have you been married for? A long time. How long? Oh my God, another spot. Uh, twenty twenty four years. Twenty four wow. years. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. And so you're like a part of the Kansas family. Oh, now. I am. And you, I am. you've never really paid attention to where I they did. Come I did. I paid attention. It was like it's conscious or something. I'm like conscious. Hey, hold on. <laughs> okay. That's all about my work. That's what you do. Uh-huh. So, Ida, you were a 
you painted pet portraits originally. I did, and I then did. And you gave all that up to concentrate on... Well, what happened was I was a painter, and over 18 years, the, you know, use of my hand, uh, wear and tear, just took over, and I was having so many problems. I had major surgery on my wrist, I had a shredded ligament and a bone separation, and it was just getting really hard to paint. And so, at that time, my mom was diagnosed with ALS, and I was struggling with, you know, just dealing with that and taking care of her. And, um, you know, the, the, the level of my intuition, everything kind of got, you know, more intense as, as my mom's illness progressed. And um, Wh- I why just... Why would that be? What's the connection? Um, I think when you are presented with a thing in your family, uh, an illness or something major is about to go down in your life, um, you can either process it, you can look to religion, you can look to yourself, your friends, your family, but it does... It, it can change you forever. And for me, uh, because my mom and I were so spiritual, um, you know, it, what it did was it unleashed my sixth sense. Talking of which, you just made Andrew Duhon manifest. <laughs> I am. I How can do that. that? I, That's a good yeah. job, I, yeah. Andrew, this is Heidi Kansas. Hey, Heidi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Good. Nice to meet you. And this is John A. Bear. Hey, John. This is Andrew nice Duhon. Andy. Good to meet you. And you know John Lisi. Good to see you, good to see you brother. Yeah. Andrew, where have you been that you're so late? What happened? I was on the other side of town, you know. He was saving lives. A couple of train tracks and yeah. Yeah, maybe a raging <laughs> river to cross. You, you look know. good, though, with your hair all messed up and everything. Thanks. I got a, I got a, a Colorado camping cheek beard right now going on. You see that? It's nice, huh? Yeah, looks good. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. You look, you look healthy. Everyone thanks. looks very healthy today. Okay. Maybe my, That's you, I man. think my eyesight's all fucked up or something. <laughs> so, Andrew, we were just talking about the connection between ALS and intuition. Hey, That's what have you got? Oil. Oh, nice. Um, so I have a client who makes beard oils. Beard oil? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just happen to have that in you. Do you know yeah. another client that makes THC oil? Just in case, <laughs> let me know. Well, no, no. It's actually, um, I like the scent. Um, so I, I usually wear it when oh, I need yeah. to do, yeah, it's nice. Well, what would you call that scent? What I got that? a beard. It's called Lady Love. Can we, can we apply it? Can John? Lady yeah, Love. you can. Yeah. Everyone, I see. No, every you got Whoa. a little something. That's yeah, it's nice. Smell. It smell like? it smells good. Yeah. Well, wait, how would you describe the smell before I? Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, it is. It's, it's nice, fresh, huh? Fresh right, smell. Right, right. Very nice. And so, where do you put that on your neck and your wrist? So, you know, I just, I, I yeah. It's not <laughs> Quite good. refreshing. Johnny Everywhere. Likes it. Everywhere. And so, what? What is this? I'm even taking a draw. So, what huh? does this guy do? He makes this beer. Well, he okay. Got... So, um, he's in prison, and. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop no, no, there. no. Yeah, but we but got it's... a whole hour to kill on that. Let's see what happens. I have. Uh, clients from all walks of life um and so the thing is uh this guy is very creative and um how did he get into jail so you don't yeah, want no, i can't i can't reveal all wasn't that he creative enough to get out no, of jail no it's the thing is he wasn't this this part of him the creative part of him was never cultivated in his family and so right. when men are not allowed to be creative that energy has to go somewhere and so when it's suppressed it can turn into destructive energy Okay. Um, and what a lot of people don't know, and I just found this out, was uh, Hitler actually was a painter and a very talented painter. Okay. And he wasn't allowed. You didn't know that Hitler was a painter? I knew he was a painter, but I didn't know he wasn't, um, he I didn't get into painting school. I didn't know that he just didn't make the cut to get into art school. Mm-hmm. And so because he didn't make the cut, that part of him was just kind of left to not flourish. You're and not so, trying to suggest that Hitler killed six million Jews, Catholics. Because he couldn't paint? Because he, I am saying Because he didn't that. get into school? Yeah, pretty much. I, I it's it's would, destructive energy. That? Men, men I, no, have I to be able it, to create, yes. Stemming from that, though, I would say it had a lot to do with the drug addiction and a lot to do with like adult children of alcoholic syndrome. Hitler, and Hitler's Hitler. Hitler. Hitler had a stepfather who like beat the living you know what out of him. No, right. I didn't and was know a that. drunk and all that and was so a abuse? deep rocked actually rabbi. And then his mom what? was a single mom raising him. And in case you didn't wait, know. Wait, that, wait, 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 come on, <laughs> I have to stop there. Hitler's father was a rabbi. His stepfather. stepfather. Okay. They're Hitler's. not sure they're not sure about his real father. His stepfather was a defrocked rabbi who was Where did you hear this one? You can look all this stuff up. It's all on there. the internet. Grayson. Yeah. Okay. The Japanese, the Japanese at the beginning of World War II invented methamphetamine. And Hitler, who was such an anti-drug and anti-smoking guy, that they had him like photoshop cigarettes and vodka out of his pictures with Stalin, because Stalin was such a drunk and cigarette smoker. This is before he, there was Photoshop. Yeah. Well, he, he thought that. Well, oh yeah. The, 
the Nazi emperor's pictures for him. So if you could have enlarged those photos of Hitler, he would be chopping them out and... Yeah, they were chopping out the cigarette in Stalin's hand and the bottle of vodka that he constantly had with him. But this is the thing. Hitler got hooked on methamphetamine and he thought it was the best thing ever. Well, it, they it actually, is one of them. They actually <laughs> thought, like, the Blitzkrieg do that. They were feeding all the German soldiers. If you wonder how they move so quickly across Europe, <laughs> methamphetamine. But the great thing is, is, like, if you watch ADD adults and you give them all this stuff... On the upswing, it improves performance. But on the downswing, that's yeah. all the paranoia. You know, like, I don't care if Napoleon couldn't fight a war in winter. I'm different. I'm Hitler. I'm going to... He got the bright idea to invade Russia in December. Right. Which was that was all on the downswing of the because addiction. Because everything up must to be down. To Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you know this because you were uh, working in the psychiatric... Yeah, because I was a psychiatric nurse, but also uh, in the, I'm not religious. She was mentioning spiritual. I'm not religious, but I studied kind of like how Siddhartha became Buddha, Jesus became Jesus, but I also studied things like how Hitler became Hitler. Okay. There's actually I'm a, a little, Chinese... I'm a little nervous now. No, there's a Chinese saying that says... Are you dangerous? No, there's five words that like I kind of live my life by, and it's, a, it's credited to Confucius. It's okay. forget injuries, never forget kindness. Right, and when you look at somebody like that, like Hitler, he remembered every injury very well. Right. He never looked at any kindness. There's a story, too, that when he was four years old, a Catholic priest saved him from drowning. And the Nazis hated Catholics, which kind of makes it amusing. Mm -hmm. hmm. So what do we want to know about Hitler again? <laughs> <laughs> we want to know whether, what do we want to know, whether Hitler's father was a priest, a uh, rabbi? The, the, Is that what we're looking at? Stepfather. 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 Okay. He was a rabbi with an alcohol that problem. Sense. Yeah. His dad was a civil servant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, we'll figure this out. I'm going to get to the bottom okay, of it. Okay, Grayson, okay. all right. But you, the, 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 the addiction to methamphetamines is very easy to find. It's all over the place. Well, there's lots of photos of Stalin smoking a cigarette, right? I mean, the, yeah. that's a pretty common photo. I've never seen Hitler smoking a cigarette or... He was, that's what, what I'm saying. He was strong anti-drug, but that's kind of like Elvis. He thought that that was medication and it wasn't right. drugs. Well, when they did methamphetamine back in, what was it? We're talking about 1939 to 45. What method did they use? He was getting injections every day as well as, like, pills. Wow, okay. Who was shooting up Hitler? He had a doctor who was his personal physician that they did research on that turned out to be a syphilis specialist. Well, you know a lot about this. Yeah. Do you talk about this much? Does it come up in conversation? It's one of those things of, like, it's easy to think that, you know, like, when they were... Before he kind of lost his mind, they were talking to Charles Manson when he kind of had it. And he was like, you people love me because it was right during Nixon and Watergate and the country was going just ape shit over Vietnam. And he's like, y'all like having a bad person to point your finger at. And it's, it's the thing of you can study how spiritual people become spiritual, but it's also a thing of I've studied how monsters became monsters. And it's a lot easier for people to do than you think. Mm -hmm. It's right, real easy to go, oh, he went to jail. I used to run around and do all kinds of drugs 20 years ago and carry handguns all the time. I easily could have gone to prison. Right. Mm -hmm. But for the grace of God, I'm not. Well, you know, I really just go, oh, this guy's in jail making beard oil. I could have been there. Right. But, <laughs> right. And so what I have decided to do is actually, uh, you know, encourage him to. So we're working together. How did um, you meet this guy in prison? Again, you know, it's, kind of, it's confidential. But... Um, <laughs> Well, so, there's so, three ways. You could have met him in prison. Right, right, right. You could have met him before he went to prison. Or yeah. he, I yeah. guess he could have written to you randomly on Facebook right, right, right. or something. Through a client. Through another client. Is this part, of your, referral. Is this part of your job? It is. So it he's is. paying part, you or you no, just do No, no, no. This is, this is someone that I just want to help get through um, okay. his time. Yeah. How long is he in there for? Um... So, so you can't say Orleans anything? Paris prison, it's, 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 Orleans it's complicated Paris. because he could be in there for a few years or 20 years or move to federal prison or, I mean, so he's, it in doesn't a, make, he's in OPP waiting for trial. Yes, yes, trial. yes. Oh, he could yes. be there for a while. Right, right. Or right. he could be out tomorrow. If he uh, knows, does he know somebody? No, no, no. He knows you. No, no. Do well, you, yeah, do you I mean, know I'm going to have him. I know a lot of people. Okay, well, you can get him out. <laughs> you could be out this afternoon if we know who to call. <laughs> I guess. No, that's not the case, though. You don't think? No, no, no. But did he kill someone, allegedly? Um, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, no. No, no, I don't know. Well, even if he did, that would be no problem either. Right, These right, These guys right. get out pretty easy out of OPP if they know someone. Right. This is not the case. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But we can't help Anyway, you. so I Anyway, I okay, so he's making beard oil. Right, Out right. of what an OPP? Exactly? No, not there. Just before. And, and so uh, I got all of this before, before he went, he went in right, to prison. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so it's a limited edition then. There, there's not going to be a new stock made. <laughs> but, how, that, but this is, goes against your whole argument because he was being creative and then ended up... Right, being, right. Well, well, this is, this is in between sentencing and so, um, yeah, hmm. yeah. So it, it's complicated and I don't no, really know all the details, but um, yeah, I think that to be in, in prison, you have to have a certain mindset. You, you, you know, you got to keep your shit together. You need to be able to think of every day as a day to stay grounded mm. and so whether you're in prison or not obviously you know so um, I just want to see what I can do to help him. How did we get onto this beard oil? I, don't, I just thing. took it out of my I saw all of these beards and well, I'm like beard, hey wait. We are really talking a bunch of shit aren't we? That's great. <laughs> Hitler did not have a stepfather apparently. Apparently that Bryce was an old Jack. myth. An oh, old oh, myth oh. that existed for a while. Recently debunked but his dad did die when he was like pretty young. So he's got a really weird family life. His dad okay. died suddenly. But the myth part was wrong, but I guarantee you they have what? methamphetamine galore. By that, the that is true. That's the true. Met, the, the methamphetamine that true. holds up, Grayson, according to your holds research. Holds up. Holds up completely. Okay. All right, so great. let's put it this way. Never knew that. If you take any of the whack jobs we got that have like big time racial stuff, imagine if they were a massive tweaker with all the p power of the German army. Who are we talking about? Trump? No. <laughs> I'm just but, talking about if you gave anybody who's kind of out of their mind to begin with that much power, bad things are going to happen. Well, we're not far from it, are we? No, no we're not. No. You look at who's not. running the whole show here. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, yeah. So, Adi, anyway, there you were. Your mom had ALS. Yes. And you couldn't paint anymore because you had a separated bone in your hand. Right, and some right, sort right. Of tendon so, issues. Yeah, and yeah. So, so, what um, happened? So, my career started taking a little... We couldn't paint. Slope. Yeah, yeah, downward slope. And so uh, it gave me a lot of time to think. And um, then my mom passed away right after that. Uh, and I started having dreams with her right after she passed away. And I would hear uh, things like her favorite musicians. Like, and, and so I'm half Costa Rican. And so to hear, you know, some of the musicians that I grew up with listening to, like just at Target or something, was bizarre. You grew up in Costa Rica? No, no, no. I grew up here, but my mom was Costa Rican. So she would play Costa Rican music that you would then hear in Target. Right, right. Like Did you just start in to different worry places. And I heard her name and I would hear things, you know, just uh, synchronicities would happen throughout the day. And all, all relating to her, and and so I was curious about this, and so I started r reading a lot about uh, mediums and and psychic intuition, and so what happens with the sixth sense, and how our society suppresses that sense, um, and so then that tied into religion, and it tied into um, it tied into this patriarchal society, it tied into so many things, and so you know now we're talking about tantric healing and and intuition and so my work has just blossomed and so painting i miss it but this is so much more interesting because we're helping i'm helping people get so, in touch with their intuitive side so what uh, so, you, so you're a healer now you're a psychic I'm, i am kind of a healer See, yeah but i empower my, people to heal themselves that's that's really the direction that i'm going that's in that's what it says here in my uh, extensive research that graham <laughs> gave me it says you're a psychic energy healer yes I yes. just read that right now. Right. You're a psychic energy healer. Yes. Okay, so what does that mean? So we come to you with... So do, you, do you call it Reiki? Right, right so Reiki is, is different. Reiki, Reiki oh, okay. is where you just kind of um, do the healing using the chakras and you wave your hands over and people... So w what I do is, is it's a lot like this. Like we could all be in a session right now, you know? Could we? And we... we Certainly are. I'm like, I, might really need, I might need some healing. Yeah. <laughs> I got bit by a spider on my finger. Can you help me with that? I didn't mean to flip you off. Did you really get Yeah, look at this fucking spider? shit, man. It sucks. Uh, and you're a guitar spider. player as well. Yeah, that's not a good thing hey, to have. Before we get into the session, though, how much is this? Yeah. How much is a session? Yeah, what do we pay for? Yeah, yeah. for one so, spider bite. Can what, 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 do you, what do you charge? So it's $150 an hour. I'll pay that any minute. Now. You want to stump it up for all Fuck of us? Yeah, I'll yeah, do it. Yeah, okay, yeah, all right. Thank you. This one's on you then. It'll be right. in tip bucket singles, but I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all right. Like money is money. That's what's up. Well, I did want to address one thing. So, you know, typically speaking, psychics and mediums and intuitive healers usually have like this witchy, you know, wart on the face, like crystal ball. And, um, and so I 
do my best. I had the wart removed right. and I <laughs> lost 20 pounds and I wear form-fitting dresses. No, I just, you Boy, know. Boy, do I you? That's a great dress, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Just have to point that out because it's a great dress. I mean that respectfully. Are you, you. Are you psychic Kansas. as well? Do you, do you know that people are... Can you read people? Yes, yes, yes. I can, I can read people and I can read hypersexuality. Um, I can... Um, this whole table... Wait a second. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. the only woman. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this whole table is about to lift off. Um, and so Since you said that, I was looking for a place to hide. It's too late. What, what, is, what is hypersexuality? So, you know. When I <laughs> well, I know what I think it is, but what is the real definition of it? I mean, everybody okay. wants to fuck you. Right. Well, no, no, it's not that. It's just that uh, so men and women behave differently, and, and society allows men to be more sexual. And so Does women, it? well, of course. I mean, we hear you, about what? men masturbating, but we don't talk about women masturbating. Where we, would you hear about that? Where? I um, do. Where don't you where hear, do you about, hear about, about it? That? Yeah. Well, I talk about women masturbating really? all the time. <laughs> uh, where do you hear about men masturbating? All the time? I mean, it's just everywhere. Is it's it? just kind of a known fact. I mean, I have a 14 year old, almost 15, and That's he got the talk. He got the talk when he was 10, 11, and so I, what I do is I, I'm an observer, and over the years I've observed uh, how my clients behave and how they interact with their children and so I know for a fact that people do not talk to their daughters about masturbation and their f female sexuality in a, in a sex positive way. It is just not being done and... Do, do people talk to their sons about masturbation? Of course they do. Do they? I have. You I have. have them. I mean, I, yeah, My, my dad had that talk with, with me when Most I was around seven. Most fathers do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Andrew, Most fathers you, do. I didn't get that talk. Me neither. I'm, I'm still waiting. waiting. Wait, do you need the talk? John? You, you was, yes. Okay. No talks. <laughs> I was, when I was 14, my mother gave me an Econo box of Trojans and suggested I don't do it in her house. See, that's a lot, though. That's more yeah. than most girls get. I, coming from a Latina background, oh, yeah, my family, you know, family full of women, everyone married and divorced three and four times. Okay. Um, so we were just told, listen, we know where you are. We know the power that you have. Um, do not get pregnant. And if you do, do not come here. Okay. And so, yeah. Yeah. Did they, did, right. did they tell you how to not get pregnant? No. No. Mm. No one actually not, mentioned that. No one did. No, no. I don't think people typically, in my experience anyway, to have talk about masturbation at, at all. I think that's not in your family. That's what you get from, from your friends at school. No, and it's not correct. Um, that's not the way to no. do it. No, well, not at all. Well, maybe it's not the way to do it. That is how it's done. Right, but if you think about why it's done that way, before <laughs> the advent of uh, organized religion, okay, and I'm talking about like the 8th century, okay, there was... A partnership, no, a partnership. Um, there was not a patriarchal God. It was a divine, feminine, and um, male God, and they were both used in the partnership model to make decisions about art and sex and, and commerce, and so everything was weighed in equally for feminine and masculine. Where, where is this exactly? We're it's, about? it's everywhere. No, but like, where, where in that century are we talking like about? like tantric, Buddhist. So this is in, in India? Yeah, before... Or in Yes, yes, before before um, Christianity, before, yeah. And is yeah. it still like that in India? I wouldn't know. So the Hindus can certainly appreciate the partnership, um, you know, uh, but, you know, it's been more than 3,000 years and we're functioning on a patriarchal God and so well, a we, judgmental, right. we a cannot. wrathful God. Yeah, we came God. up with this idea of we've going to hell. Yes, and, yes, yes. Yeah. And so you can understand that, I mean, there was, you know, we, people didn't even get married back then, um, you know, so the institution of marriage actually was implemented during this time. And um, it was that time that people started to get really uh, uncomfortable about sex. And so all of these restrictions were placed on people and women especially. And it still holds true today. Um, it's 2017. And even though the pill came out in 1970, uh, women still don't understand that sex is for enjoyment. It's not just for procreation. And if you, I guess over the research, I, I just think now that religion is about numbers. It is about just keeping people within this, you know, this parameter to, to keep the numbers going. You think the average woman in America still doesn't have sex for fun? Um, for, for, mm, up to a certain point. I uh, believe.
Can abstinent or we can't masturbate hmm. and um, okay. the reason why is because it if it's done too much then your dopamine levels become skewed mm -hmm. okay and um, it actually too much of an intense orgasm can create a like a almost like it's called an intense hangover sex hangover and so it can mess with your dopamine levels and your levels of happiness, your outlook. Um, and so what happens with men is they turn to porn, addiction, drinking, overeating, porn, a lot of porn. <laughs> okay. um, and so it's, it's not satisfying. It doesn't satisfy you anymore. And so right. there's a, a chemical neurotransmitter called prolactin that um, gives you the indicator. It's an indicator that says, okay, we're done. Go do something else. And so that becomes depleted. And so, or, or, this is wait. from too much sex. Yes, yes. It's too much. No, 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 too, more, too many orgasms. Too no many matter how orgasms. you get them. Right. 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 And so that becomes a problem too because the prolactin actually suppresses dopamine levels. Hang on, can you just ask this you is more question? depressing than the Hitler talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the fuck? How do we get more depressing than the Hitler talk? Wait, wait, wait. Actual pathways are the same for men and It's not the same. They're the same neural pathways. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Sexual activity, it's this cortex it screws down it's the same neural pathways as cocaine wow right right so holy fuck so, i'm a fucked up human being man. Right. Yep. so but it, but what happens also is um the dopamine releases all of these feel good and so you know when these chemicals are released you actually you know uh don't want to you don't want to bond with the partner anymore. Um, a novelty. Really? Yeah. It, it just, mm. yeah, like you want something new so because this is you're. Natural. Yeah, it is a natural After thing. You and have so sex I can see. You don't want to talk to them. That's right. Natural. Right. And women well, have an attachment. Um, that's why women are attached or attached easier with someone. So um, the way as to. As a woman. Only. As a woman, yes. Only. Men don't have that problem as much. Um, the problem is awareness, and so what I do with my clients who are dealing with, you know, he, I, you know, casual sex happened, and I, I thought he was going to call me. Now I'm hooked on him. I can't let him go. So I bring awareness to my clients about all of these different subjects, mm. and so I think that awareness is the key to everything. Oh my God, there's so many questions. So once you become aware that we're all kind of. Uh, um, we are susceptible to our primal forces that pull us toward, you know, uh, what what is sexually stimulating to us. Right. Where do you make the distinction between that's just how we are as as humans, mm -hmm. and where you decide to transcend those things and decide that we've evolved to become a species that has this metaphor that we call a heart. Right. And you know, where, where do you decide to, to to transcend? I guess is what um, I'm asking. I believe, and, and I know that when you decide, like a drug addict wants to get into recovery, okay, so you, you can, you know, you can get this information, you can know this information, and the awareness is what it is. You don't have to act on it. You can decide, because we have free will, you So, um, what what I've done is is uh, I have basically taken meditation as a as a gateway to self pleasure, um, and for women, um, you know, it's hard for women to meditate, and, and and men can meditate, and I, a little easier in my opinion. And okay. the reason why is because y'all can compartmentalize your world you know women we are so emotionally connected to everything everything matters to us so when we are talking and and something's happening between the two of us i'm i'm thinking and talking to you but i'm thinking about my son my kid my neighbor whatever you're just thinking about what is happening you know this is the way it is you even have a nothing box that you can sit and just do nothing and so I've heard lots of my female clients say, my husband can just sit there and do nothing. And it's so <laughs> infuriating. And I think it, that's admirable, actually. I, 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 I totally dig that. And so what I do is I, I share this information with women. And I said, let me get you to that place of nothing in a blissful state. Which is? Which is, um, so you sit in lotus position. And you just cup your vagina. And you softly... You um, had me cup your vagina. 
<laughs> right, right, right. And so you Should we just, try this at home? Or huh? You can do whatever you want. Um, okay. But I've done the research. It works. So it does. Okay. Yeah, so. so you're sitting down with your legs crossed. Right, right, right. Your legs crossed or laying down. Um, and, okay. and the thing is, because uh, music is such a vibrational, you know, um, elevator, I, you can... You can listen to any music that you want. I have a client who can't meditate, but when I told her it was okay for her to listen to Black Sabbath, she was all over it. Okay, so, then, so you turn so, on Black Sabbath. Uh, right, right. You and cup your vagina and, and you lightly, lightly just place your fingers on your clitoris. Okay. okay? And in less than five minutes, you will be meditating. And awesome. meditation, like, no, 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 now, I mean, the thing is, it takes a lot of practice. And so this is one of those instances where if you fuck up, you just end up having an orgasm. So it's a great way to do it. Day, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. This is a win-win for everybody all the time. And so, Unless you're having too many and then you've got a whole oxytocin Well, problem. no, no. Um, actually, for women, it's not as big of a problem as for it is for men. Okay. Wait, put me there. So, so when you're you're de- you're describing this, and then you allow the person to go home and try this in the privacy of their own home, or yeah. do you? That's okay, the deal, so, right? Okay. Um, so, so yes. That's a good um, question, Andrew. Could you do it in yoga? Well, class? I'm asking, like, do you just this like is, stand outside the door and like, okay, this is what you need? Right. To do. I call like, it clit sit meditation. Um, so clit sit meditation. <laughs> oh man, this is so much like less depressing than the clit sit. This is getting better and better. Yay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you registered that trade name? No. You might want to do that. Have before. you made T-shirts? Or? I'm on my way. But I have yeah. a question though. So right. is, is there the right. opposite? Okay. So you say. Okay. So men don't need this. Okay. Um, men actually need uh, more spirituality. You guys are coming way Less too much, and men and women need to have more orgasms you guys need to have less because so, isn't the word hysteria based on right, right. women not having exactly, enough orgasms right. and so in the yeah. 1900s yeah. Um, there were a couple oh. of doctors who found that there was a correlation between the lack of uh, orgasms that women were experiencing and what was being labeled as hysteria and so they were manually stimulating women um, that you know uh, until their until the carpal tunnel set in and they had a bone separation and a, you know shredded ligament. That was a job at some point. Was it was getting women yeah, off in their office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so how yeah. would you train for that? Was it be medical? Was it a medical? You job? know how. You. Was, that, <laughs> was that a doctor who did that? Yeah, that two day? doctors. Yeah, two doctors. Yes, yes, yes. And when are we talking about? 1900s. 1900s. Uh-huh. Right, right. Is, that's all Victorian stuff and Victorian repression of women, you know, when she was talking about women are under sexually liberated. And I, I guess it's easy to forget because we live in New Orleans where we still have problems and all, but we're the least segregated city you'll ever be in. You know, even as though. As far like, as men and women. No, but there's a Madonna no, whore I mean, as complex as, happening here. Yeah, as far as gay, Madonna straight, whore, black, Madonna. white, men, Madonna, women. Madonna, you're a whore. There's no in between. Everything is shoved like, on top of each other in New Orleans. If you think about it, you can be in a great million dollar house and you can walk to a place that's a really bad neighborhood in New Orleans. And the thing is, is we aren't as segregated. I mean, you've got the gay bars along with the Catholic churches and everything right. else. So it's kind of like, it's hard to remember that there's still places, though, in America where it's very Victorian. You well, know, yeah, if they have a strip club, it's like out right. in the city limits. It right. can't be anywhere near well, downtown. Plus, we have a very sexualized society, I would think, in New Orleans. I mean, you go to Mardi yeah, Gras and people are half naked. This is true, but yeah, up but until a few years ago, this is true. Yeah. There were seven states you could buy a shotgun or assault rifle in. You could not buy a vibrator or dildo in. Hmm. Yep, I believe it. There were it. seven states it was illegal to own a sex toy, it but was there was no problem with buying an AK-47 mean. with a 40-round clip. <laughs> right, right, and then right, we right. can't figure out why we have the problems we do. I think that men are threatened when they when they realize that a woman can seek pleasure on her own, it, it, sometimes it, it is a scary thought, you know. Um, that, not everybody, I but that, I think that... I mean, I have to say, there seems to be an incredible amount of generalization here. Right, right. Well, my generalizations are stem from... Experience. A, my, my experience. Right. This, is, this is not... I'm not being general. I'm being just true to my experiences and things that I've... Uh, accumulated so you, you over time. Fi- you find in the clients that you're seeing, or in your friends, or what is it that this is all these women who are having all a of these women? Repressed? I'm forty. Just, I'm forty-five. Okay. I've been around so this is a while not just now. your clients. These are your friends and your girlfriends you went to school with, and right. your neighbors. Yes, and, yes, yes, yes. I have. And how many um, percent? What percentage of these women have never had an orgasm in their life? Um. Okay. That's you know consistently or just one or I mean wow. so we can divide this up um, okay. by themselves or with their partners um, I know I know questions. women that have regular orgasms 
by themselves but never have orgasms with their partners. And do their okay. partners know and that? Well, if, yeah, yeah, but they fake it. Yeah, I know, all of that. Well, I don't know, I'm I just know. asking, do people well, just... Well, this is the thing. So a man has a, there's value in the performance of his, you know, ability to make a woman orgasm. Well, like these, that's are all head, these are all heterosexual couples. You're talking. Um, no, 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 this is same-sex couples. This is, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's, yeah, I'm going to make that clear. All mm -hmm. right. So this is about being uninhibited. This is about, um, you know... Your your religious background, your childhood, what you know, all all the stigma that is that is placed with masturbation in, in our society. So women still are struggling; they really are. And so the thing is, people ask me, you know, I want to I want to be intuitive, like I want to learn how to be a psychic. I want to tune into that plane. And I think that I got really. I, you know, a lot more intuitive when I started doing my meditation, and so when I cupped my vagina, it got better. <laughs> so I think that's the gateway to the gateway uh, to opening up your intuitive sense. I really do. But did you just notice how we're all oh, I'm look eight year old boys? <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> did. Like, we're, we're listening, <laughs> and we're paying attention, everyone, and we respect everything you're saying. But then you said, "I cupped my vagina," and we're like, <laughs> "Oh, I know." Sorry, but sorry. I'm thinking the gateway to spirituality is your clitoris. Is yes, it is. I, uh, yeah, uh, I have yeah. to write that one down as well, guys. Please do. Okay. Can you email me that? <laughs> that word. Actually, text you me. Just the word. I, 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 I am. In, I am interested in. Uh, so you. In whether this is is this revolutionary thinking? Is this your own? I mean, no, I mean, there I are understand. people that have been doing tantric healing for a long time. Um, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't looked into too many people, but there is a woman. Her name is Salm Isadora, uh, who is a you know huge proponent of human sexuality and meditation and understanding sex positive. You know. Um, platform where mm -hmm. we can inform, you know, just educate people about how sexual, uh, spiritual need to merge but what's to the, heal it, the world. Okay, so that's it, not a, that's not your because uh, I thought spirituality, okay. right? Even in the chart list of the you know the Tree of Life chakra, yes, illustration, yes, chakras, yeah, that the sexuality is at the bottom and spirituality is at the top. Right. So I work from the bottom up. Right. Okay. But. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cool. I thought I didn't know they were actually <laughs> like connected in a sense. Right. That, well, like, I, I mean, thought you progressed from one to the other, and then you sort of right, left how, sexuality but, but behind. If you think of like Maslow's like. hierarchy of needs, we're all stuck in this survival, like the latter part of the hierarchy. Yeah, and yeah, but traditionally. Don't you get to a spiritual enlightenment once you've left all the material crap Yeah, but behind? how many people are stuck surviving, like not being able to let go of the past? No, um, no, but, no, but just answer the question. No? Isn't that the typical pathway? That it you is transcend? Not, yeah, 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 but it's no. not the typical pathway. I think that but, people can choose in, in the healing arts, you can choose if you're going to go top to bottom or bottom to top. You can. Yeah, you can. You can start off enlightened and end up just fucking like. Well, crazy. yeah, I mean, you, I've heard, I've seen people do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? I mean, I'm like, okay, I, it makes more sense to me to get through the uh, root chakra, which is your tribe, your family, all the beliefs, uh, systems, you know, and 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 getting through the traumas, um, and then your sac your sacral chakra is where it all happens. These are all the emotional powerhouse of your body in terms of the energy center and so right there is where your genitalia is and so all the mistakes all the people we've slept with or didn't sleep with or you know who we can communicate with for men and women this affects us deeply in terms of okay. enlightenment so you by touching your clitoris mm -hmm. is it clitoris or clitoris i can never remember I it's pretty much yeah, which, it's which one is it, it both yeah, it's tomato it's, tomato yeah. i thought one was uh, <laughs> one was why what i learned in new zealand and the other was what i learned here but now i can't right, right, right. i never remember which one it is i what, say what do you say i say clitoris you say clitoris right, okay right. let's say that then so you say that by touching your clitoris you can be, become more spiritually aware do you have to have an orgasm to get there? no 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 just you, touch it yeah right right well i'm talking about can a, i touch your clitoris and you uh, yeah no <laughs> No. You have to no. do it yourself. Right. No. Why no. you look so disgusted? Well, no, it? I'm not disgusted. I'm just like, you're <laughs> fucking with me. I know it. Um, uh, not really. <laughs> okay, so actually, no, that is funny because there is Thank a place you. in New York and San Francisco. It's called <laughs> Orgasmic Meditation. And there is a guy. You could go and check it out and maybe be this guy. But I think he's called the Flicker. And what he does the is, he, yeah, I think he like <laughs> manipulates, you know, all of the it, it, people. Flicker. People are having orgasms because. 
they understand the connection between enlightenment and the body, and and so yeah. This is so, where this is where a guy will do it for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. And all so about I'm it. trying to I'm trying to scale back. This is not going to happen. This is not what I'm comfortable You're not with. Doing no, that. I'm not. I'm just trying to find a way for women um, to just get centered, focused, and and empower them to open up to the sixth sense. So, uh, it. You know, when you meditate, you know the goal often is to quiet the mind, right? And um, right, that's what but, you're doing. But you're you're talking about meditation with an element of an orgasm uh, achieval. So when you get closer to that, right before, w I mean, quieting the mind. You know, you would have sexual thoughts, perhaps, or you're tr right. are you attempting not to have sexual thoughts? Um, so there's different stages, and so mm -hmm. when you're sitting and you have uh, some time to quiet your mind. For women, we can hold our clitoris and not have an orgasm. I mm -hmm. mean, you can you can yeah. be in a place where you just want to create some quiet, uh -huh. some grounding, and, and then you can do this. And uh -huh. this is what the emphasis is. The yeah. emphasis is on just quieting your mind mm -hmm. and allowing the nothing box that guys have to happen for us. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily thinking about sex, although if it happens, good for you, you know. But I'll tell you, the more orgasms you have, the m there is a link between orgasms and abundance. There is. Okay. <laughs> there is. Um, this is good news. This is, as well. this is energy. This is how we emanate. This is the energy that we emanate. This is. So um, the more orgasms you have, right, the better right, right, your the right, richer your life right, is in all senses. If I'm a business owner and I'm cranky and you can tell that I'm uptight sexually or whatever, you're not going to want to buy my sandwich. You're not going to come back to my sandwich shop. But if I'm like loosey goosey and like having a good day, like I'm just in a better mood, you're going to buy my sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. I always thought Fuck I was just I, smoking weed. But right. I guess I could well, if you're hungry, I mean. Yeah. No, but I'm telling you, though, we, this is where the primal, you know, just the way we behave is just, you know, we want to be in a place where it feels positive. And, and women, um, because of the way we've been brought up in society, it's difficult for us. Mm -hmm. And so, it is, like I said, you know, just to be able to incorporate meditation into your everyday life, or ma it matters. It makes a difference. Okay, sure. I have to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. When you walk around, have you noticed on lampposts and other places a, a white sign with red rising that says love on it. Yes. Have you seen that all over Love time? it. And you know who the guy behind that is? John A. Bear is sitting right next to hey, you. Hey, John. Nice so, signs. So Thank you very much. I want to talk about that in one minute, but first of all, I'm going to have to make John at least play something. All right. Okay. What are you thinking of playing here, John? Well, since we had all this sex talk, let's <laughs> yes. do a song about jumping through puddles naked with somebody. All right. Right? All right. Song called Break in the Rain. Oh, baby, I see a break in the rain. I see a break in the rain Baby, I see a break in the rain Let's go stomping through the puddles Naked holding hands Stomping through the puddles Naked holding hands Stomping through the puddles Naked holding hands Stomping through the puddles, baby Naked holding hands huh. sinking low oh, Baby, I see the sun is sinking low oh, Baby, I see the sun is sinking low We'll lay here in the tall grass Nobody gonna know Lay here in the tall grass Nobody gonna know We'll lay here in the tall grass Nobody gonna know We'll lay here in the tall grass Nobody gonna know Seems that 
met you when the moon began tired. It seems that you and the moon be getting tired, yeah. Seems that you and the moon be getting tired. Well, mellow down, he's a baby just for a while. Mellow down, he's a girl just for a while. Well, mellow down, he's a baby just for a while. Well, mellow down, he's a baby just for a while, yeah. John Lisa from John Lisa and Delta Funk. Man, that sort of puts you in a trance, doesn't it? Yeah. Good stuff. It's in tra- Thanks, man. Nice guitar playing, as always. Too. Thanks, man. What do you think, Andrew? That was killer. Yeah. Thanks, man. Very thanks, nice. Thanks, thanks. That's Just an original. song about sex. We love it. <laughs> There's not that many songs about sex, are there? I know. I'm writing as many as I possibly <laughs> yeah. can to change that. <laughs> there sure are a lot of songs about fucking out there when you think about it. There are. Pretty what's much. what's on our minds. All of them. In yeah. our hearts. Yeah. Right. Everybody wants love. Love. Right. Okay. So, John. Yes. Everybody in New Orleans has seen these white signs with the red capital letter love written. Yep. On it. And they're, they're everywhere. There's thousands of them. We, when we started off three and a half years ago, we put up like over 300 in the New Orleans area. And the, the idea was it was just two old hippies who had had a lot of conversations about how most of the religious stuff that really rings true. If you detach yourself from all the theology and who's God's son and all this kind of stuff... You know, Christians have you reap what you sow. Buddhists have karma, which you put out there is coming back to you. And even in bad neighborhoods, they just, you know, what goes around comes around, baby. So it, there are certain sayings that just kind of hold true no matter how you look at it. And believe it or not, even if you don't look at a religious standpoint, a lot of people have seen, if you've ever seen the movie Full Metal Jacket, Love and they're it. in there going, blood, blood, kill, kill, and they say this over and over. But that was actually a research thing the Pentagon did that they found that new recruits would either shoot over people or would freeze and wouldn't shoot people. Because the idea of killing another human being was just, like, horrifying. And from Korea to Vietnam, they started saying kill and blood a lot. Just psychologically, new recruits shot and hit things 90% of the time once they started saying kill, kill, kill in basic training. So even if you take it from a psychology standpoint, if you actually just kind of put love up in people's noticeable agenda would they love each other more would there be less road rage homophobia racism rape etc 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 what's the answer now we've had five years has it been three years or five years? well it, it, it's been like three and a half years i i don't know you know um some of it gets better some of it i don't know i can tell you that you know one of the big things i always drew from is like my dad was roman catholic and he married my mom who's a baptist and my mom has relatives that, like, pray for my father because they think that Catholics are pagan idolaters and all that and going to hell for sure. So, like, I always think of the fact that Martin Luther King was a Southern Baptist, but he saw what Gandhi did, and by that time Gandhi had been shot, but he took his entire family and went and lived with Gandhi's relatives, like, in India. And for, like, a Southern Baptist to go, I don't care what you call it, that's what we need, hmm. that's the hand of God. And if you think about Gandhi or MLK... They didn't have any guns. They didn't have any power. If you were betting on the front end, you wouldn't have bet they were going to get anything they wanted. And all these guys did was walk around and talk to people. They didn't have armies. They didn't blow up bombs. They didn't commit terrorism. Well, what's the difference between Martin Luther King, Gandhi, and you? I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to throw well, myself in the same category, but I'm working off well, the same idea. No, I mean, what, what makes somebody a world leader like that, a statesman? They like weren't Martin. related to Bobby Hebert or the other two. <laughs> <laughs> What, what does, though? What elevates someone like that? I don't know. You know, it's, it's one of those things of, and, and, you know, part of the reason, too, like, um, I didn't, we didn't want this to be about us. We were hiding right, our right. names for a long, yeah, long thought, time. I thought you, there, it was a secret who was We were, this. and that was kind of the fun of it because it got people to talk about it more. Like, I even heard for a while in the first year they were talking about it was a um, promotion for Prince playing Essence Fest in 2015, and that was one of my favorites, actually. Right. But we left it alone, and then we were on the national news, and they said they are going to hide our identities, but you see the side of my face and hear my voice, I'm like... Not that y'all would know who I am who don't know me, but I'm like, every one of the people that know me go, oh, I know that dude. Your mom called you right up. Yeah, as soon as they heard my voice and saw the side of my face, they're right. like, yeah, I know who that is. Well, you have a very distinct voice, I'll say that, that's for sure. Hmm. Have you always had this voice? Uh, yeah, but it kind of, part of it came from I was born here, went to elementary and high school, like in Monroe, 
where they filmed that wonderful Duck Dynasty export of culture and uh, enrichment. And then I lived in Baton Rouge, lived back here in the 90s, and I lived in South Florida for like 10 years. Just graveliness. Yeah, Mar- yeah. Yeah. yeah, Grant and Moreau, a five-year-old's dog just like that. Actually. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the Marlboro Reds for breakfast you know, it, in Monroe. It. That usually does it, yeah. <laughs> so you decided to put your money where you... Most people would have these conversations with them, had a few drinks in a bar, and say, so you know, it would yep. be cool if we put the word love all around town. Maybe it would change things, and then in the morning you go to work and forget about it. But what made you actually do it? Hmm. The odd thing was is a mix of two friends. My friend had the idea, and if you can believe this, he is my friend, but he's very introverted and shy and neurotic. Well, and he was like, a good balance. Yeah. yeah, and he was like, I'm afraid to hang these signs up. And he even said, you might get a $25, $50 fine for hanging them. I'm like, Pfft. compared to other stuff I've done, you really think I'm afraid of this? <laughs> so you put it kind of high on the pole, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what's your process? Do you bring a ladder? Do you have kind of a... The, the most of them we're doing with, yeah, a step ladder and then, like, nails and all that. Cool. Okay. We're doing roof and nails. So do you, what about, what if uh, there could be more of, like, a, uh, uh, I'm just imagining a, a staple gun on a big pole where you could just kind of come and hit it and run, you know? The interesting really thing is, is, is make it it's, stealthy. it's very small. We have gotten some, like, blah, 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 that's all yeah, we need is more yeah, trash. Right. But that's only about 5 to 10% of the time. It's yeah. very rare. But the one yeah. thing I know is from people that own clubs and all that and coffee houses, there's something about they hate staples. Yeah. So we either did roofing nails because it's only one or two. It's not like tons of staples. Uh-huh. Or um, I take a screwdriver or a knife and put holes in the top and do a twist tie. Yeah. And the, the thing is, is actually like because there was a principal who's a principal of three charter schools uptown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She asked us, will we do it? We went around to like the schoolyards. We turned them around to where they're facing the playground and like twist tied them yeah, on cool. there. Because it's on so, a metal So fence. sometimes it's on, you know, a pole, and you're not going to ask anybody to put it on the pole. You're just going to put it on the pole. But then other times it's at someone's establishment, and you go in and ask, can I put this sign up? Is that what you do? We don't usually ask. We've had people, like the lady from Tipitina has got in touch with friends of ours. Mm-hmm. This is before even people knew who we were. Mm-hmm. That kind of started happening to where, like, oh, yeah, you know those guys? I want some for, like, my front store window cool. and all that. Yeah. We actually kind of, like, snuck around to the flag shop and just dumped a bunch of flags there. I don't know if they sold them or gave them away. We, like, dump love flags at the love store. Mm-hmm. Well, so this is parallel to the movement of street art in general, you know, where people are just, listen, I'm going to do this. I'm going to quickly make my mark and then, you know, create a positive impact. And, and I love it. I think it works. Without a doubt, it's it's the thing of the one, like I was saying in New Orleans. You know, while we still probably have some diff, you know, bad attitudes, maybe a little bit and some anger. New Orleans is one of the few places. It's not like there's like some suburb bland for miles that way away from the urban center and all that. All of New Orleans is so mixed up, you know. And it's like um, I have a gay aunt that came to live with us when I was young. A lot of my mom's friends were gay. My godparent is gay. Mm. And we had, even growing up in Monroe, we had people of color and homosexuals in my house. Mm. And if you want to talk trash about my family, me and my mom were big bar fighters, and I've had my nose broke more, more times than I can count. Mm. That's before I kind of, like, grew up a little There's bit. There's the got, voice, a deviated septum. Okay, yeah. now I figured it out. <laughs> Until I kind of got over myself, mm. a lot of this was I'm right and you're wrong. Uh-huh. Even, you know, when he brought up, you know, of course, you're going to get the comparisons between Hitler and, you know, Orange Julius Caesar is going to come up. Why are we up. going back to Hitler again? Bro? No, no, no. But I'm just saying, you know, even with that, I don't want to fight nobody no more. You know? Right. What about your is, mom? What about her? Is she still a big bar fighter? Yeah. She's not a big bar fighter anymore, but this would not surprise anybody who knows my mom. Okay. She was somewhat legendary. There's a story of her in the 80s being at some restaurant, and Mick Jagger had to ask her to be quiet so he could finish his dinner. Nice. <laughs> because she was like raising so much cane and throwing things and telling jokes and stuff. Wow. Where is she now, Mom? Uh, my mom and dad, actually, my dad is a semi-retired doctor. He took an um, assignment there up in Waldron, Arkansas, which is way up in Arkansas. Okay. It's way up in Walmart land. Have you sent them any love signs? Yeah, they got one in their yard. They've got flags, T-shirts. They've got all the paraphernalia. Oh, you do flags as well and T-shirts. We do flags, have T-shirts. T-shirt I have a T-shirt on. So is this like a... Uh, franchise thing or whatever that's called it's, you, you it's, make some money it's definitely not for profit part of it is is that we took my friend Drew we took a lot of inheritance unfortunately his mom died four years ago and he was trying to figure out what to do with the money yeah he got himself a new car and all that but he was like I want to do something more than just for me and that's when we first put the love came out, paying out we weren't even putting our names on it because we wanted it to be bigger than us so he financed it yeah, he financed the beginning of it. I don't even think we came close to breaking even. 
we sold stuff. I do a lot of um, yoga at Swan River, and they're, they're friends of mine, so they've, like, put a lot of the stuff up for sale and all that. But at the same time, though, if anybody asks, I will give them a T-shirt or sign out of my car if I have one. You got an extra have medium? A T-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You I, can tell the musicians in the room. Yeah. 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 Well, a Ooh, shirt. Like a clean one. shirt? <laughs> well, a clean shirt. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing is, like, even if we sell stuff for, like, 10 or 15 bucks, we give so much stuff away, I don't know if we've yeah. ever, like, reaped a profit. <laughs> also, recently, I got into a thing of... From yoga, there's like, you know, there was some girl going to Barcelona. There was this young married couple that were moving to Chile. Oh, yeah. Every time I know somebody that's going to a major city or an area like that, I'm like, take some love signs with you. So, like, piecemeal, we're starting to get them out there. I've mailed, like, some to Boston, L.A., Chicago, Detroit, Birmingham, Alabama, Seattle, Washington. So, piecemeal, it, we're getting it all over the Would it be possible to use the power of the Internet to maybe send templates around or get people excited about making their own love signs? One of the better things is is uh, in New Orleans, I don't know if you saw this, and I ended up meeting the guy. After we did that, there was a black sign that was love in different colors, and it was in a uh, square pattern. Mm -hmm. And I actually met him, and he was a non-denominational preacher, actually, who does yoga. I met him. Couldn't have been nicer. His last name is Love. And he mm -hmm. was actually like, oh, I hope you don't mind we copy. And I said, no, we don't mind you copy. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Right, of course. That it is bigger than me and Drew, that we do want to, like, you know, it, uh, how I got over my own issues in life was a lot of people putting up with me being a jackass and a lot of my bad behavior and not growing up. And, you know, it's it's what made me. There are times still, like, because of New Orleans and the streets, and there's some second line, like, you were late today. I didn't know there was going to be a second line or a train, and I get stuck. We're uh, just blocking I, the streets. We're yeah. just blocking. You ever saw that? Never mind. Sorry. I have shut, I've, like, shortcut it through bad neighborhoods, forgot I put a love sign up, and I will be in my car going, you stupid mother. And I'll look up and see a sign I put up and actually go, oh, yeah, that, that's, this is not how I'm supposed to be acting because we're human right. beings. Sure. It's a reminder. Yeah, it reminds me how I'm supposed to be acting, you know? Sure. So can I, can I say something? Yeah, what, what, <laughs> what I admire about this is the fact that, you know, it's a man doing it. You know, you are expressing love. Um, you know, we have a problem in our society with men growing up, telling our boys that they can't, uh, they can't cry, they can't break down, you know, buck up, stop acting like a girl. Um, I've, I've seen it off the field and on the field. And so this is a very important message, and I think it's a ton more powerful than, you know, we're even talking about it. I think that your thoughts become your reality. And so when people start to look at this, I think, you know, subliminal, subliminal messages take place. And, and when you see them, it stays with you. And so it's amazing. I think it's interesting that you called it, uh, you know, his, his message. And it's simply one word, you know. It's, uh, and it's, it's where we start talking about what right. it means to love, love right? Right. It's sad and it's amazing all at once. Mm. You know, um, 2017, and we have to teach people how to love. Mm. Shouldn't be that way, you know. And it starts with our children. It starts with, uh, you know, empowering our children to be comp compassionate. You you can't teach. You know, you're not born compassionate. You teach your children how to be compassionate. I've seen children on a playground, and if a child is crying, you can tell who's been taught compassion. There's a child who will say, are you okay? There are kids that run past, back and forth. A child is crying in the playground. I'm, I'm a is, teacher. Is that always nurture and never nature, the compassion element? So I've had this discussion with my husband, and so um, I can't answer That's that. That's Mr. For real. Kansas to you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, we yeah, do. Was, we talk nurture. That, was, was that nature. kind of like, like, like subtly? Like I've had this with my husband. So, <laughs> um, so y'all are teasing me. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a nurture and nature argument. Uh, it's both. It's both. You know, if you're uh, if you haven't, yeah, yeah, if you haven't intuitive powers, I don't, don't you know the answer to these questions? No, I don't. No. I don't. Sometimes uh. things are so close to me, okay? It's like, it's my life, and so I have to figure shit out just like everybody else. So when you meet someone, can you tell if they're going to be nice or not nice people? So it's different levels, you know? I think we all can tell if someone is going to vibe with us or not, you know? You can tell. And, what and is that so about? See, because, look, that mm -hmm. actually did happen. Like, okay, that's my crappy little car out there, right? And when I was pulling Which down one? for Red Street, uh -huh. that awesome little, I call it C-3PO, right? Uh -huh. And... When I was driving down the street and I saw you walking down the street and I'm like, I 
guarantee she's doing the podcast. I don't know who she is, and but she's looking for an address. I can tell. There you right? go. Like, yeah, and that's why I met you at the door. I'm like, hey, you're doing the podcast so too, nice. right? It's just, so yeah, nice. And sometimes right? that synergy is there. Right. So it's, there it's, is. It's right. kind of cool. That yeah. makes you intuitive as well. It does. Unless yeah. it's your point. Is that we've all got We it. all have it. We all have it. And what I'd like to do is... I would like to empower men to know to, to just understand that it's not just a spiritual thing that is uh, permission for women to be spiritual. You have it too, and we need to give people men permission to be sensitive to to uh, work out all the shit that happened to you growing up. You know, the, the great thing was is that I go grew to up therapy. In a, I, go to therapy. I grew Do up. In, it. I grew up in '80s in Monroe, so people would make comments about like, "Well, there's a lot of gay men at your house," and I'm like. And uh, and I probably got a better education in my parents' house sitting around the kitchen table because right my mom hung out with artists and decorators and all that than I was getting in high school. Right. And guess what? Nobody ever tried to hit on me when I was a child or touch me or any other of the myths. Right. But the funny thing I did notice is the people that would be the most angry about it, if I suggested it all, I'd be like, well, you know, I'm around gay men all the time and they don't cause strong feelings in me. I wonder why they cause strong feelings in you. Or some of the worst fights I ever got into in this Thou world. Thou doth protest too much. Yeah, to exactly. But the, the funny thing is, is being around men who are already beyond the macho concept and you got to think I'm tough and I'm a man, mm -hmm. actually taught me a lot more about being a very like decent person mm -hmm. and like how to be a better person because I don't have to be tough God forbid you don't think I'm a manly man or right. I'm a tough guy and all this. So it was actually, it was a good exposure to like basically, you know, just a lot of our concepts. A lot right. of our concepts of what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman. But what was it uh, like? gay men have greatly enhanced my life. What was it like being a gay man in Monroe in the 1980s? <laughs> not, uh, not I, can only, I can only say from the outside looking in, but yeah. they basically had one gay bar, and it was famous I'm for... surprised that there, there, there were rednecks. Once again, there are rednecks who would go out there sometimes and wait and jump people and assault them and yeah. beat them up because they were in a gay bar. Yeah. You All certainly right. can't stereotype anything, uh, but you would have to think that if you're... Your inner desires are against what society tells you should be. Then that is going to be something that builds resiliency and you know tests your character. And Absolutely. you're just going to decide who you are. I would imagine. You know, uh, so it's easy. I, I believe that we have. Uh, we all have a spiritual blueprint. This, uh, like a contract that, mm. that we we elected to come back into this world, and we learn our lessons, and we choose the people in our soul circle. We choose our parents, and so to be gay and be born in this world is one of the most courageous things that you can do. You know, you're here to set an example and to be fearless. Wait, so, are you suggesting uh, that before we're born, we get to choose our sexuality? Yes, wow. yes, okay. yeah, I do. I have do. you read many lives, many masters? I sure have. <laughs> I've read all of those things with uh, past lives. Yeah, yes. that one's fun. Yeah. Do and you, you can masturbate your do way. Do you think he's full of shit? Spirituality. That's the main thing. Not you. I'm taking not out you. Of me. You can. I can. You, you can, cannot. We can't. Guys cannot masturbate no, I mean, their way into yeah, higher power. I mean, you know, I mean, this is a whole other hour. We could talk about this. Well, all we day. are going to have to talk about it for another hour because we've got to get out of here at this point and make way for paying customers. Sadly, but this has been a pretty fascinating half hour. I think we have. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. I think we've all learned something here. Thank you very much. Thanks. Very much. Ivy Kansas. A I D I. You can have, find the link to Ivy's work, including. Spiritual path to uh, well, the masturbatory path to spiritual <laughs> enlightenment. Meditation. It's meditation. It's, it's called what? The uh, clit, it's my clit, clit cupping. The clit right, right, sit right, meditation right. method. It is. It is. Yes. Okay. The clit sit meditation method. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can find that on our website. It's neworleans.com. We'll have a link to that. And what's your website called, actually? Do you have one? Not really. No, not just, yet. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You. Just Google clit sit. Yes, yes. Okay, don't don't Google it. it. You won't find anything on really? it. No, oh, you won't. Okay, all right. You have to call me directly. Yeah, you will. <laughs> okay. And John A. Bear, thank you very much for being here. And thanks My for pleasure. all the love. Thank you. On behalf of all of us in New Orleans. Are you still doing it? Are you keeping going with it? I'm still doing it. Drew's out of it, so it's only me, so it kind of creeps along. But the thing is, compared to like all the years I spent working in psychiatric institutions and a lot of that stuff, for some strange reason, I think this is way more rewarding and doing more good than that. All right. Okay. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Nice. John Lisi, nice to see you too. We can still always find you. John Lisi and Delta Funk down on Frenchman Street. And We're around always the, somewhere. Around if you're, if you're a hitman or the IRS, <laughs> I'm in trouble. 
I'm always Easy to somewhere. find. Yes, and Andrew Duhon continues work on his record. We didn't get to a song today. Oh, no worries, man. Next I'll, week. I'll have a new one for you next week. Okay. How about that? All right. Let's get back to that next week. Yeah. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you, too, to Basics Swim and Gym, where you can find a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout and yoga clothes with style, including bikinis, one pieces, and cover ups. And everything for beach. Don't cover up. Or po- don't cover up. Even. <laughs> don't cover up. You can up. find that on right next to Basics Lingerie. It's on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. Thanks to the Hangover Destroyer, the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. Go to the Hangover Destroyer website, hdestroyer.com. It's called. And uh, write happy hour on the coupon code, and you too can get 30% off of Hangover Destroyer. And seize the dawn. The producer of our show is Graham DePonte. Our associate producers are Alison Moon. And April Stolf, Christian Unruh as our music director, and Jean Valois as our music producer. Thomas Walsh is our technical director. Are you going to play me out of here? And Andrew on harmonica. Our live feed director, if you've been watching this on Facebook Live, our Asha Griffith and Grayson Jernigan. You can go back and watch it on our It's New Orleans Facebook page if you'd like to see what we all look like. Our theme music is currently being played. By John Lee and Andrew Duhon. The theme music at the beginning of the show was played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can sit upright for about an hour while drinking cocktails, drop us a line. Our address is on our website. It's neworms.com. We can also find other shows we make here, including uh, Out to Lunch with Peter Oshuti, live from Commander's Palace. True to the game with the very funny Chris True. Midnight Menu Plus One with Margo Moss and the man who ate New Orleans. Unlisted Nola. A way to buy an unlisted house in New Orleans. And Louisiana Eats with... Poppy Tucker. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and it's itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our Facebook page. Those photos were taken today by Alison Moon. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, thanks for subscribing to us. Take a moment, if you've got one, to rate and review us. It only takes a moment and it does help other people find us, actually. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street in Uptown New Orleans. Come on down to Wayfair anytime from 3 to 6 in the afternoon. They have a three-hour happy hour with half-priced drinks and half-priced food and a brunch on the weekends. Happy Hour is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For Andrew Duhon, John Lisi, everyone else around the table here at Wayfair and back at our office at INO Broadcasting, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Grant Morris. I'll see you back here next week on Happy Hour. Yeah, Grant. Woo!